Welcome to the EKG Guy. I'm glad you're joining us today. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're coming back, glad to have you back with us. So uh, we're going through our ECG coding reference guide, which you can access online or you can buy um, in print that we have at our store. Okay, if you go to www.ekg.md, okay, you can find it there. Um, otherwise, you can go online and you can get free access. So either way. So um, how you get access is you put this URL, okay, this into your search bar, go to there, enter your email here, click submit, you'll get an email with a link, and then from that email, you'll click the link, and then you'll have access, and you'll get to this area here, and this is where we're going through. As you can see, there's many different parts, 10 parts, that all are detailed within. So um, if you're a returning user, Again, you can put your email unless you already have it up uh, and simply put your email in and you'll be directed immediately, immediately to the reference coding uh, thing. And you can access this on the phone uh, if you're in your clinic, on your iPod or any uh, phone application or your desktop. OK, and so that is uh, always available to you. So what we're doing now is we're going through each part. We've gone through part one. Now we're here at part two. OK, so you can click this drop down. And what I'm going to start doing is adding more examples in these videos so that way you can just access them right there. Um, so we're going to start with sinus rhythm. So this is where we are and let's get started. So here we have sinus rhythm present here. OK, and let's go why uh, we have that. OK, so we're not going to go into the, all the details and how to interpret this. We have our EKGs of the week where we go detail by detail of getting the rate and everything. But I want to focus on making sure you understand why we put this coding reference out there and what we're showing here. So sinus rhythm is the default rhythm of the heart, okay? The pacemaking cells, the impulses arise from the sinus node or the sinal atrial or SA node, okay? They're all the same thing. And they're transmitted to the ventricles uh, by the AV node in the his Purkinje system. So let's just review our conduction system quickly, okay? So if you're new, you notice that I use a lot of box diagrams because, you know, I can draw the heart out and it wouldn't look good, obviously, because I am not an artist. Um, but I, I think it's it's best to simplify things. And um, so let's look here. Here's the heart. And what I want to put here is the right atrium. This is the left atrium, the right ventricle, and left ventricle. Our sinus node sits up here. From our sinus node, we have these internodal pathways. Okay. And they come to an AV node. So this is our SA or sinus node our AV node, our His bundle is here, okay? So the His bundle. And then from there, you have a one that innervates the right ventricle called the right bundle branch. Then you have the left bundle branch. And the left bundle branch subdivides into an anterior and posterior fascicle. So left anterior fascicle, left posterior fascicle. Now from the SA node, the sinus node, you also have a Bachman bundle that depolarizes and innervates the left side, the left atrium. And so you can see. But the impulse is originating from the right atrium. So this is the right atrium. Notice our sinus node and sinus rhythm were originating from this region here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And the conduction just follows from here all the way through the AV node, his bundle to the bundle branches. And from the bundle branches, they have the Purkinje system in the ventricles. And then from there to the individual cardiomyocytes, the individual heart cells, okay? And that's how the impulse spreads. So from the atria down through the ventricles as we describe here, okay? So from the sinus node, they're transmitted to the ventricles by the AV node in his Purkinje system. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, Let's see how we identify sinus rhythm on the EKG. Well, we're going to look for P waves that are having normal axis. And the normal P wave axis is between 0 and positive 75 degrees. So what do I mean by that? So the normal P wave axis. So we use these quadrant systems, and you, you have to get used to labeling them. This is 0 degrees. This is positive 90 degrees. This is plus or minus 180 degrees because this is negative 90 degrees, okay? And this is helpful when we look at ventricular axis, but in this case, we're looking at P wave axis. And we said that the normal P wave axis is between zero, which is here, 
and positive 75 degrees, so about there. Okay, so everything in this region is what we call the normal P wave axis. So what leads actually sit there? Well, we know lead one sits here at the po that's the positive end of lead one. This is AVF, the positive end. Lead two sits here at positive 60 degrees. So if you can imagine something like that, you have AVL here okay and then so that's the frontal plane lead three is over here the frontal plane meaning up and down and then you have the horizontal plane which are the precordial leads so the precordial leads are these okay the limb leads are on the left side so the precordial leads we have v4 v5 and v6 that we should know okay and why do i put these there well i put them there is because if you have an impulse that is heading towards those leads that's the positive end of those leads you'll see upright p waves okay and when we're identifying sinus rhythm we're essentially looking at the p waves okay now whether it's sinus bradycardia uh, normal sinus rhythm or sinus tachycardia that's based on the rate and we'll get to that at some point now the other lead i want to make you aware of is lead avr that sits here so now that we know that okay why do we say that there's upright p waves in these leads and here and then invert an avr so let's take a look at that what i want you to do is imagine that we're taking the sinus node here which involves the right atrium okay and we're going to overlay it right here so that's the right atrium our sinus node is sitting here remember and then notice that the sinus node is conducting down pretty much the main vector is going towards the av node so essentially going in this direction and notice it's pretty much going between zero and positive 75 degrees okay so that should make sense that is essentially uh, the normal axis between that area so from there okay notice that this main vector is going towards these leads okay leads one leads two somewhat towards lead avf but then you have v4 v5 and v6 so notice what we said one and two plus or minus avf v4 v5 and v6 okay and if it's going towards those leads we should see positive p waves in those leads okay so let's look there well here's the p waves okay lead two are they more evident okay lead three you may see them but notice that the it's going away or you're going towards these leads okay but that's fine you can see them here in lead three okay and in avf so the axis is probably closer to this region the positive 75 degrees and then if we look over on the left side here the left lateral leads you can see some p waves somewhat hard to make out but they're there okay so those are some p waves and if you look at avr which is this lead here notice that avr has negative p waves okay so it's negative because it's going away from this lead so you should see negative p waves in those leads okay so you can see positive p waves as the uh the wave the impulse is moving downward and so inferiorly and leftward and so it's possible to see positive p waves in these leads but you want to ensure that you're seeing negative p waves in avr okay so hopefully that makes sense now what you also want to see is that the p waves have the same morphology meaning they look the same so the best way to do that is find one of your rhythm strips and probably the best one is lead two down here and notice that all these p waves look the same Okay, so all the way through the, the 10 second strip, you want to see that these P waves are the same. Okay, the other thing is how do we differentiate the rate? Okay, and this is where you get between sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, and normal sinus rhythm. Here we're just looking for sinus rhythm, and essentially we've made that. Okay, now normal sinus rhythm is when you have a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute okay so aside from the same morphology the other thing i wanted to mention is um, that the rate in adults is between 60 and 100 and it's age specific so notice that with younger children newborns and those younger they tend to have a faster uh range okay and around adult years and even actually around the age of six it starts to be back in that normal range okay so let's just erase this to clear it up a bit 
So let's just take a look at how we find the rate. Okay, so there's a, a few things you should note here. You can have a rate that's in adults we're looking at less than 60 beats per minute, 60 to 100 beats per minute, and over 100 beats per minute. Okay, so over or under 60, remember this is the normal range, this one here, we call that normal sinus rhythm. Okay, when you have a, a range or a rate that's less than 60 beats per minute, we call that sinus bradycardia. And when it's above 100, we call it sinus tachycardia. Okay. Now we say the range is between 60 and 100 because that's the intrinsic rate of that sinoatrial node, the sinus node there. So that's why that's the case. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense uh, there. Now, in order to find the rate here, you'd want to find the atrial rate. So you want to use the P waves. Okay. So you can count the P waves. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, we know that from beginning to end of our standard 12 lead is 10 seconds. Okay, and you know that 10 seconds times 6 is 60 seconds. So to find the rate, you can essentially take the number that we said was 15, multiply it by 6 because there's you need 6 of these to make 60 seconds. Okay. And 15 times 6 is 90 beats per minute, okay? So that's a great estimate, and you can see that puts us within that range. So essentially, this EKG we're looking at is normal sinus rhythm, okay? So again, just to go over sinus rhythm, this is the default rhythm of the heart. Uh, the pacemaking starts in that sinus node. It goes down through the AV node, through the His bundle, the bundle branches, and through that uh, Purkinje system to the cardiomyocytes. The main features you're looking at are at the P wave, okay? So notice the P wave. And here we, have, we want a normal axis that we looked at and specifically looking for these findings here. Negative in AVR, okay, and tends to be upright in lead two. Uh, the other thing is you want to have the same morphology. You want to ensure you're not dealing with a wandering atrial pacemaker or multifocal atrial tachycardia if you have a fast one. Now, the atrial rate we use to the P waves, okay? So don't use the QRS complexes. When you're trying to find the atrial rate, use the P waves. And in adults, it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And you have the other ones there that are age specific, okay? Newborn from 110 to 150 and so forth. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you understand the pathophysiology, why you see what you see, and that's kind of the main purpose of and what I want you guys to get out of this. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute. And this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, 
what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.